Hey, what's going on everybody? Bauer Brown here. Welcome back to the channel guys. As you can see, plainly we are still inside the uh, tutorial series map. Alrighty, which means we're still plugging away and we're still learning new things about how to build our map. Alrighty, so this is actually the, uh, the fourth or fifth time that I'm shooting this video because uh, I keep thinking of things that I want to add in there and I either can't find a way to fit it in after the fact or it's just been a mess so far, all right? And so, like I said, this is probably the number six, five or six that I'm shooting this video, so I'm only going to say it one time. So pay attention. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, this is quite a few shoots, though. Alrighty, so what we're going to be doing is looking around my map here. It's still kind of plain. Even though we learned a little bit about placeables and getting those into our map, there's still other things I need. You know, I need some trees and fire extinguishers and telephone poles and all those good things, right? All those prefabs. I'm going to need those in here. So we're going to go over importing and exporting. Now, I know this is really easy. You guys mostly know how to import things and probably export things too, but give me a chance and you might learn something new. All righty. So first and foremost, I want to get this one out of the way. All right. Some of you guys know about this. Some of you don't. But if you go up the window and go down the prefabs, right, you're going to find this pretty cool little list of like all these different prefab objects that you can download from the Giants mob, mod hub. All right. Now, these aren't necessarily created by Giants. These are mostly created by users and uploaded to the mod hub and Giants is making it available to you through the mod hub. All right, now some of these objects come from the base game and they're just kind of making a collection out of it and they're grouping it together and just making it easy for you, okay? Um, but definitely keep it in mind that any of these objects are here for the use. And whether you're a map maker or you make vehicles or no matter what you make, there's probably a little bit of something in here for everybody, okay? Um, so definitely check back here every once in a while to see what kind of like uh, new and cool stuff they have in here for you to use. So if at any point you find something that, that you would like to use, all right, so just click on that object, whether it's this windmill or this crash barrier here, and then go up here to where it says import prefab, click on that. All right, now this already exists because I already, uh, like I said, this is like the fifth or sixth time I'm doing this. So <laughs> I'm going to overwrite that one. It's going to download the prefab. And for some reason, that's taken a hot minute. Not sure why. Man, I didn't think it was that big. All right, so what we got here is it's telling you to select for the prefab item. Okay, now you have two here. You have you have Schutzplanken, <laughs> Schutzplanken type B. Yeah, it looks like you have an old and a new. All right, so I'm going to click old and click OK. All right. Now what's going to happen is, holy smokes, look at all those Schutzplankens. <laughs> they normally don't come loose like this. Um, normally, you know, they're, they're well, I can't say normally. It's, it's, it's a mixed bag. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. If they come loose like this, normally I'll just kind of group them all together, right? I'll stick them in a group. You know, I'll name it guardrails or Schutzplanken or whatever, and then I'll throw it in my prefabs folder. All right. So now concerning that pop-up box there, how it gave you two options, right? Um, now I picked, I think I picked the first option of old. Now what that did is that, that old, it only imported into my map that one option, but it did download both of them. Okay. So you don't have to be worried about, you know, knowing which one is which, cause you know, you're only going to get one option. You're getting every single option that that comes with. Um, but it's only going to import the one that you pick right into the map. All right, so what happened behind the scenes there is if we go back to my tutorial series here, right, and I go into map, it will create a folder for you, a prefab folder, okay? So if you go into your prefabs there and you can see right here is my Schutzplanken, okay? And it, it'll do that for every single one of them. It's a pretty handy feature. So like I said, keep that in mind because when it comes to prefabs, right, it can't get any easier than that. That's just super duper easy. All right. So second thing on the list we have is importing objects. OK, now importing again, very, very easy. We've been through this and I kind of expect that you know how to do it by now. If you do not, shame on you. <laughs> All right. So the first option we have is to go up the file, go to import and you'll be a uh, You'll be presented with a dialog box here where you can drill through your file system, find the file that you would like to import and import it that way. I consider that the hard way. The second way is super duper easy. I'm not even going to show you it's that easy is to just go ahead and you find the file that you would like by uh, opening up a, 
opening up one of your folders here and just dragging that bad boy in there and dropping it right into your viewport, right? Couldn't get any easier than that. Now, do keep in mind that when you import, it only accepts i3D and FBX. Now, FBX, if you don't know what it is, um, you're really never going to have a use for it. Um, if you do know what it is, great. But for the sake of this tutorial, uh, let's just say that it will only accept i3Ds, right? Because I think I might have worked with FBX once, maybe twice in all of my mod maps. All right, so it only does accept i3Ds. You can't XMLs, you can't drop anything else, you know, you can't drag or import anything else other than i3Ds. Um, so in case you're, you're thinking of trying, now I know accidentally I've tried to drag other things over, um, not realizing I grabbed the wrong item and it'll just tell you, shame, shame, you can't do that. <laughs> okay, alrighty, so let's get on to exporting now. Uh, every once in a while, you may need to export things from your own map. Now, whether you're exporting from your map, from a third party map, from a base game map, the process is relatively all the same. All right. Now, I don't normally tell you, hey, I want you to do it this way and just trust me, that's the right way, because those are the kind of videos that I hate. You know, they don't explain why or how. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of an explanation, but I do want you to trust me that this is the way that I want you to do this. All righty. So you remember when... We're working on placeables and I showed you the house here, right? Um, and I moved that bicycle off of the porch down here onto the ground. So how did I make that pro how did I make that change stick? Well, the way I made that stick was I, I it was actually the uh, props, right? So I highlighted props and then I went to file and I went to export selection and I just exported it because I needed to host that locally at that point, right? Once I made that change. So I went to export selection. Now, what I'm going to show you here is a little bit, a little bit different, and this is kind of like a, a, a coverall, basically. It works in every situation. Now, normally, let's pretend that I am on a third-party map, right? So this is your map, whether it's like Sally or Bob or Joe or Cindy or whoever. I'm on their map, okay? And I see this house here, and I'm not sure if this is a base game or if this is, you know, like something that you created, a third-party prefab. And it kind of makes a difference because why base game, we like to keep all those files over there on the base game, right? No sense in us having, you know, folders filled with textures that, you know, we don't need to host locally because the base game's taking care of that for us. But if it's something that you created, I need those texture files. I need to host those locally because they don't exist in the base game. All right. So normally what we would do here is just highlight the object that you want to export. You go up the file. We're going to export selection with files, okay? Um, now I'm in this test folder that I created here, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just give this this weird gibberish name and I'm gonna click save. Now I'm gonna be presented with a box here. Now, do you wanna get the parent directory structure? This is where I just say to trust me, just click no, right? Make your life easy and click no. You don't want the parent directory structure. Um, in a minute, I'll, I'll explain a little bit about what that means, but for now, just trust me. Famous last words, right? All right. And then the next box you get is, uh, do you want to keep the game relative paths? And on this one, again, click yes. Okay. Now game relative paths. What is that? Do you remember the dollar sign data? That's a game relative path. Okay. That's telling it, you know, this path is just relative to the game. Your other option would be just a physical, literal file path. And we don't really want that. And again, I'll explain why in a minute. All right. So do you want to keep game relative paths? We click yes. And if we head on over there to our test folder. Okay. Where did my test folder go? Where are you? Hey, there you are. All right. So it gave me the, uh, the i3D and the shapes file, which was basically the only two things that I was expecting. All right, so if I open up that i3D really quickly, let's have a look. We'll open that with Notepad++. And there you go. You see all the dollar sign datas. Those are the game relative paths, okay? Nice, nice, nice. Now, like I said, this was a coverall because this, uh, this house here could have very easily been modified. Then you wouldn't have known it, right? It could have been a special house or... You know, it may not have been base game at all. Now let's go over here to the satellite dish, right? We're going to click on that and let's click the parent and we're going to do the same thing. Let's go to file, export selection with files. Okay. And well, let me delete that just so we don't get confused because I get confused easy. All right. We're going to give it a name and uh, 
that's not gibberish. That's that's you know, <laughs> that's, it's Russian or that's my bad joke. Move on. <laughs> All right, so let's click save. All right, do you want to get the parent directory structure again? Let's click no. And do you want to keep the game relative pass? And again, let's click yes. All righty, let's see what we got this time. All righty, well this time it actually gave me a folder. Well, what's in that folder? Okay, placeable, sat dish, textures. Hey, there's all the texture files that I need. Okay, because I told it, you know, to download with the files because if it's not a base game object, I'm going to need to host those files locally. All right, which is what we just did. So we got all the files that we need. We got the i3D. So let's have a look at the i3D here really quick in Notepad. And hey, look at that. You can see that we got a couple of uh, game relative, you know, paths right here because they reuse the shaders. They reuse the base game shader. So that was really important. If we would have clicked no, you know, it would have. Well, if we would have clicked no, it would have just downloaded the shaders also. OK, but since we click yes, now it just saved us a little bit of overhead. Right. So now we can use the shaders from the base game. But since these uh, texture files don't exist in a base game, it downloaded it for us. OK. So that's just a, a way to be safe under any circumstance. This way, you know, you know, you're getting all the files that you need and files that you don't need, right? It's not getting files you don't need, but you're not getting files that you don't need. <laughs> Sorry, it's getting late. I'm getting loopy. All right. So let's see. What were the other options here? I just want to explain a little bit about what's going on here. Okay, so let's go back to the satellite this year. This would work better if I had a third party map, but I'm too lazy to open it right now. So we're just going to stick with what we got. All right, so let's go on to file, export selection with files. Alrighty, uh, let's give it a goofy name, click save. Do you want to get the parent directory structure? Yes, I do. Do you want to keep the game relative paths? No, I do not. So now I, I pick the complete opposite of what I've, I recommend that you pick. OK, so let's go over there, see what we got. Alrighty, so this time I only got, uh, did I redo this? Yeah, I did. All right, so let's have a look inside of here. We'll open this up with the uh, Notepad++. And oh, OK, now you can see what's going on here. All right, so the reason it didn't give me a folder is because this is my own map. All right. Now, if I had downloaded this from another map, it would have provided me with this placeables folder. But since I already have this placeables folder, it's just giving me a literal file path to get to that folder. Right. So that's the reason it didn't. It's pretty smart. It didn't provide these files for me because it knows that I already have them. All right. Same thing with these vehicle shaders. And you can see that it went back one, two, three, four directories. So literally what it's doing is it's taking me outside of my actual mod map. It's taking me that far back. So if I was to take this the way it is and use this in my map and upload it and for somebody else to play, it completely wouldn't work, right? Because they would need an identical directory structure on their computer for this to work. And the chances of that are, are slim to numb, okay? So like I said, there's a lot of different options that you can pick. That's the reason I recommend just doing that same way, right? Just go in to the first prompt, say, no, you do not want the parent directory structure. And on the second prompt saying, yes, you want game relative pass and you are covered 100% in every, every instance, you're okay. Now, the only way that would make a difference is like, say, if it was base game. Now, I remember the base game, it's not going to provide you those files because, you know, it knows that, uh, it knows that you already, it knows that they live on the base game side. Okay. And there is some instances where it says, do you want to provide game relative pass or do you want to keep them that you would click no. And it would provide you the folder full of those texture files and stuff like that. And the pass would be relative to that folder. All right. So like I said, to, to keep, you know, the, the length of this video down and from getting just long winded, I'm going to leave you with that. Like I said, the first prompt, you know, as far as the parent directory, click no. Second prompt, game relative pass, click yes, and you'll be fine every time. I encourage you to experiment on your own. You know, I'm not going to spoon feed you all the information, all the answers, because that's not what we do here. 
Well, maybe we do a little bit, <laughs> but <laughs> um, at some point we just need to experiment. You need to get your feet wet a little bit and try things out. And that's how you learn, you know, so damn it, go learn. <laughs> All right. So that that kind of covers the options as far as for as far as exporting goes. All right. Um, now, if you give me one second, I'm going to change maps here and uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab some things from the, the base game map. Right. So give me one second. Let's get that opened up here. OK, so I got this opened up now. Um, I, I kind of changed my mind. I'm going to give you one more example now that we're here. All right. So I'm going to pick this hut. All right. Let's pick this gas station hut. Now, let me give you an example of what happens with make sure that's empty. All right. So normally, hey, get back over there. I'm going to go to file. All right, export selection with files. OK, let's give it a name. Click save. All righty. And do I want to get the parent directory structure? Normally we click no, always click no. Now, do you want to keep the game relative pass? If I click yes, all right, the only thing I'm going to get is the i3D in the shape file, which is to be expected, right? Because I am, I'm on the base game map right now. But let's say I actually want those files, okay? In this respect right here, where do you want to keep the game relative pass? I would click no. All right. I know it's a little bit confusing, but this is this will give you the game relative or will give you the game files as far as like your shaders and textures. OK, and you can see that's exactly what happened here. Now I have, you know, all the textures for that gas station. You know, I have, you know, any shared textures and the shaders as well. All right. And then if you open up the i3D here, Instead of game relative, it's just giving you paths that are relative to this i3D file. OK, so you can see that texture shader shared. All righty. So I just wanted to throw that out there just so you know what the difference is. I know a lot of this can get confusing really fast. And, you know, my apologies for that, because sometimes I'm tired. I'm tripping over my words and, you know, I hope to God that I'm not making things more confusing than what they really need to be. So hopefully I simplified things for you. And if I didn't, you know, just drop a comment down below and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be sure to explain it to you that way. And if need be, I have no problem shooting a whole new video to kind of go over these things and explain it a little bit better when I'm in a better, better frame of mind. <laughs> All right. All right. So now concerning exporting. Now, this is kind of cool. This is just like shopping, right? Well, I consider this like shopping. Now, the only bad part about this is. Man, you can get carried away. Literally, sometimes you can just get hundreds and hundreds of items that you need. All right. So my first recommendation as far as that goes, um, when you're downloading this stuff, let me get rid of that. Actually, I don't need that test folder anymore. So let me get rid of that. I don't like all this clutter hanging around. All right. So I'm going to go to documents, go to my games. All right. So I have a folder down here that I call utilities. And I just have some common stuff that I use a lot and I use often. Right. So like crossing constructor and uh, some of my scripts for giant editor, but I have a prefabs folder in there. All right. And within those prefabs, I have a bunch of stuff like or for trees, for example, I already went through the mod map and I downloaded or not the mod map, the base game map. And I downloaded like all the different trees from the different maps because now I have them to use. So this way, every time I need to work on a project, I don't have to go back to that base game map and download all those things all over again and import them into my map. I just have them in one spot and I'm good to go. Now, concerning that also, and there's been some confusion around this, is once you have them downloaded, you do not need to copy these into your mod map and then import them from there. You don't need to do that. If it's a base game file, now that's the key. If it's a base game and you'll know right away because base game doesn't have any other files attached with it. No texture files, no nothing else. So if you don't see, you know, texture files or anything, just drag it over from wherever it is. It doesn't matter where that I3D lives. Even if it's outside of your mod map, it doesn't matter. Just drag it in because all your paths are game relative. All right. So in, in some cases you'll get like here. If you look at like, say, these like these barriers, right? These have uh, maybe that was a bad example. Was it a bad example? Um, you'll have some of them like here where it has your own textures, sounds folder, right? So it has its own textures and stuff. So in that case, then I would need to copy all these things over to my mod map 
and and then I would need to import them from my mod map, okay? Because if not, you can't import anything from outside of your mod map if it has dependencies. And by that, I mean, you know, like textures and sounds that go with it. So basically a rule of thumb is if it's base game, you can, you can import it from anywhere. It does not matter. You do not need to copy that over to your mod map. If it's a non-base game and it has textures and stuff that come with it, then you need to copy it over to your mod map and import from there. Okay. Alrighty. Hopefully that again, wasn't confusing. Now, as far as importing, right. Or exporting, you can export literally anything that you see here, right? So if you want the border, you can highlight that and export it. Uh, if you want any of the, uh, these, these water planes, you can export those and, and use it in your map, right? So literally anything and everything that you see here is exportable, okay? And the process is all the same. Like I said, you go to file, export with files, and the first prompt for parent directory, you click no. Second part for game relative pass, you click yes, okay? Um, now, as far as, uh, that literally is it. I mean, there's not much more to it, so... I don't want to drag this out too, too far. I just want to show you like one or two things really quick. Um, when you go through here, my the first tip that I have for you is to check the internet first because probably like say you want some trees, okay? Somebody somewhere out there has probably got all these trees into a group already and, and they uploaded it somewhere as as a prefab all right so always google it and look first because it's much easier to download a package that somebody already put together than it is for you to go through here and download these one by one okay because that's your other option like let's say i want one of these elm trees here let's get myself in there now i happen to know that these elm trees go from stage one to four all right so here we have stage one two oops we got one and two and then i'll click three now, four, they don't use that often, so I might be drilling through here for quite a while, like quite a few folders trying to find that stage four, all right, and I can't find it, but there is a four. So what I would do is I would highlight all of those, I would put it in a group, and I would call it uh, like elm trees or whatever I want to call it, all right? You can put, you can mix and match. You can put every single tree into a group if you want to and then import it that way. And by that, I mean all your elm trees, pine trees, stuff like that. Uh, what I don't recommend doing is to just take in an entire folder that has like a, like this, like all of these elm trees. Well, I'll just do it that way. It's easier. It's really not. I, I recommend going through and pick of one of each type. Don't, don't download you know, export 80 different stage ones and 80 different stage twos. There's no point to that. There's really not. All right. So like I said, go through first, see if you can download it from somewhere. And if you can't download it, um, then you can come through here and, and export. All right. So a lot of things that I like to download or export is fences. They always come in really handy. Sometimes you find them on the internet. Sometimes you don't. And here I will do the exact same thing. I'll quickly look through this folder. I see that uh, I have a I have a board gap two meter. I have a gap pull. I have a pull one and two. Okay, so I just get download. All I'm doing is exporting one of each. Okay, and then I have a board closed. So I'll just use Control. I'll highlight you know each one of those different items. Alrighty. Um, and I'll do it that way and I'll just name it fence. Now, what you don't need to do is download that whole stinking fence. OK, so if you highlight that fence again really quick, if it'll happen here, you don't need this whole thing. Right. So when you have that, you don't need that. Right. The only thing you really need. Let me shoot over to that folder quick here. OK, so you have that board gap right there. And then find one of the poles. Literally, that's all you need right there to make this whole entire process work is one pole, right? And and one one of these uh uh <laughs> one of these fence pieces. Ay, ay, ay. All right. See, and what I would do in that instance is I'd highlight both of those, I would make a group out of it, duplicate it, and then I would drag it over, and there you go. And now, see, you can kind of see where I'm going with that. And I can make an entire fence that way. I did just this one piece and a pole. 
So keep it simple, folks. Don't download a hundred different things that you don't need, right? Like I said, I'll usually go through and I'll, I'll look at ones that are a little bit different, you know, like I got this board gap closed. It looks like they use that for like a gate or something like that. Okay. So there's a piece that I could use. It's a little bit different. I can use that in my fence. All right. And then there is a, a pole too. I'm not sure what the difference there is. doesn't look like there's much of a difference, but I'll download it just for the sake of it's labeled differently. So, you know, I download, it looks like it has a little more wear on it. All right. And it adds a little bit of variety to your map. So I will download that as well. And then just out of the pieces that you see there, you have everything, everything you need to make a fence, right? And in future videos, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do fences that miles long and it's super duper easy. One of them using splines. So I probably already have that video out there. I'm, I'm not sure, but one of them using splines. All right. So that's really good. And there's a couple other ways not using splines. All right. But I'm going to show you. Not now, but I will. <laughs> All right. So like I said, that's that's one of the tips I got for you there is just keep it simple. Don't download a gazillion different things, right? Just download what you need and let that be that. All right. Same thing with like uh like bigger fences and stuff like this. If you look at these fences, see how that comes in that that big one, two, three, four, five sections long. We don't need that. All right. So what I would do is I'd open that up. And I'd start drilling it down. There you go. That's all I need right there is that that one little link right there. Now, sometimes I'll open up the rest of them and I'll see if there's any kind of a I'll lift it up and see what. Oh, it looks like I can get away with an entire fence just like that. Sometimes I'll look and see if there's any kind of like poles or anything like that associated with it. And, you know, and then I'll download that if I need to. But you get the idea. OK, um, you can mix and match anything that you want. All right. Where's there? Uh, let me see if I can find a good, good example of that. All right. Say I want this transformer here. OK, well, it comes as just the transformer. Well, I like these bollards that are around it, too. So instead of having to export all of those individually, right, I can hold in control and I can highlight all of these items. All right. Turn them into a group and then I could go ahead and export that whole group. And then it all comes together. I don't have to try to arrange things when I import it back into my map or anything like that. All right. So like I said, it's like shopping. Same thing with the buildings. You can use all the buildings. You can go ahead and click on click on it. <laughs> there you go. All right. So I got the fire department. Now, don't forget, always look at the parent group. You don't want to be missing things. Right. You don't want to be leaving things out. So we have attachments. So there's all the attachments that comes with it. If I would have just exported the fire department, I'd be missing out on all those attachments. So I go to fire department place, right? The parent group and I export that. Okay. So don't forget about that. And that's the same thing like with this house here, right? I would hit residential house place and that would give me everything included with that, right? All the props, all the attachments. And in some cases, if I hit like spot, it gives me the sidewalk, it gives me the fences, it gives me, you know, it gives me the entire uh, little little playground there. It looks like a basketball hoop in the back and even a snowman for the wintertime, right? So that's kind of cool, right? So when you import that into your map, it'll look just like that. You can set it down and it doesn't get any easier, right? So you don't have to place a million different things. You don't have to be you know, laying down fences, lining things up. You can just mass produce these things, right? Super duper easy. So, you know, what's that whole thing with kids? Keep it simple, stupid, right? Simplicity is the name of the game, right? Don't make things more complicated than they need to be, right? And at this point, once you have this, you know, exported as a whole, you know, as a whole package here, you can pick it apart later if you need to. If you decide that you don't want these fences here, then just delete the fences, you know, or if you don't like that playground there, then just get rid of the playground. That easy. OK, um, so like I said, just keep in mind that every single thing can be exported. Every single thing, you know, keep things organized, put them in the groups if you need to um, keep it simple. Go through. Don't download 80 of the same thing, you know, download one of each, you know, fences. You only need a gate piece and a pole and you're good. All right. So stuff like that. All right. So go through, start, a, you know start experimenting with, you know, exporting different items and kind of see how that goes for you. Um, now, when you're goofing around in your base game map, when you're done and you go to close this, it's going to ask you, you know, do you want to save the changes? Always click no. If, if you click yes, you're going to overwrite your base game 
And that is just going to be a bad thing. You don't want to do that. Okay. Um, so now you can see back here where I was in my utilities folder, right? I go to back to my prefabs and then my trees. All righty. So if I want to start using some of these in my base game here, or not my base game, in my mod map, right? All I need to do is just say American Elm 3 and let's say, uh, maybe I don't have 4 in there. Oh, shame on me. I know there is a four. Oh yeah, how about that? I should have kept that open and exported my own. I was pretty positive that I had that. But like I said, I do recommend first before you go through all this that you just go ahead and you uh, see if you can download it from somewhere first. It just makes life so much easier. All right, but concerning these is American Elm Stage 2 and 3, you can import more than one item if I haven't mentioned that before. And notice that I am outside of my mod map folder because it doesn't matter. These are base game items, right? All the, all the paths are game relative, so it doesn't matter. And now that those are in here, I can go ahead and I can start pimping out my map, right? Ooh, that's a big tree. Okay, let's move that. A little too big. Need to find some smaller trees. Maybe stage two is a little bit smaller. Alrighty, maybe not. Eh, it's only smaller because I put it 10 miles away. <laughs> Alrighty, but I'm not going to keep those there. I'm going to, I am going to start pimping out. Oh, I'm going to start pimping out my map a little bit though. Like I said, uh, one of the things I was thinking about doing is doing kind of a, a let's build series where you can follow along as I build different maps. And then also with this, it'll be kind of a let's build my two tier tutorial series map uh, anyhow just throwing it out there it was an idea so that is all that there is to importing and exporting so like i said keep all those things in mind don't make it too complicated uh by all means have fun definitely keep things simple and keep things fun so with that being said i am bauer brown and i will see you on the next one